Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome back to AVX Live. I'm Joe Gilderson, President of Corporate Audiovisual Services. And once again, I am joined by my co-host, Mr. Ryan Finch. Mr. Finch. Hello, hello. Good to be back. Good to see you. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on, Ryan. It's June and we're busy. It's yeah, the way it's it was kind of a it was a rhetorical question. I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> Wish there were there's, less, but you know, that's okay. There's no, no, we don't wish that. Don't listen to him. There's corporate conferences, there's gala dinners, there's graduations, and much, much more. Indeed, all of the above. Yes. The hard part is that it all happens on the same days, but yeah. but uh, either way, I don't think I've actually seen you in a week. Where have you been hiding? Uh, I've been all over the place. Uh, lots of, uh, corporate programs going on right now. It is the season for that, uh, quarterly updates, live streams and town halls and broadcasts and lots of stuff. So, uh, honestly, I haven't even seen my wife in a week, so don't feel bad. Okay. I don't feel that bad. That's good. Now that we can help that. with that. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, we, we had to touch on our feelings first. <laughs> I, I, think we've covered, I think we've covered that part of the world and now we're going to move on. In our last episode, we started a new series called Behind the Scenes. We're going to be kind of moving forward on that with some different, uh, different thoughts. But in that particular episode, we were discussing how to have a well-thought-out run of show. This way, we can actually produce a program uh, as smoothly as possible. And that's always the goal. And, you know, so while we're going to keep going with that series... We needed a live guest, and we have got a good one today. So we're going to tell you all about her. But before we do, Mr. Finch, let's see if you can remember how to tell people how they can find us. My lines, you can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube Live. You can do that every Wednesday at 1 p.m. And while you're there, you should drop us a comment, be part of the show, ask a question, and we will answer it live. Just do it. Go ahead. Why not? Uh, you can also like, comment, share, subscribe, all the above. Super helpful. Much appreciated. If you miss this program, you can watch this on YouTube. Of course, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you already know that. But in any case, the rest of our clips are there too. So you can check some of those out. And you'll also find some bite-sized pieces on Facebook, on Instagram, and on LinkedIn later on for some highlights, some video bites. There you have it. Those are my lines. That's it. It's pretty good. I, I mean, I'm, about I'm impressed. <laughs> well, try to try to contain your enthusiasm. And why don't you get excited about our guest? How's that? Well, I think that's an excellent lead in, Ryan. I knew you were here for a reason. But uh, let you me can. tell you about our, today's guest, Jennifer Flowers. So Jennifer is the founder and CEO of Accreditation Guru, Inc. And is a nationally recognized accreditation and nonprofit management expert. Jennifer and her team of expert consultants help child welfare, behavioral health, and education organizations across the U.S. and internationally to achieve and maintain accreditation. Jennifer's expertise includes strategic planning, nonprofit board of directors development, quality improvement program design, and risk management. Jennifer is certified in nonprofit board education by BoardSource. Jennifer is also a sought-after national speaker on the topics of accreditation and nonprofit governance. And just this past April, Jennifer won the Chairman's Recognition Award at the Business Council of Westchester's Hall of Fame event. Whoa! Really incredible stuff. So everyone, if you could please welcome to the show today's guest, Jennifer Flowers. Hi, Joe. Hi, Ryan. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. I'm sure you, you do. Uh, quite last po picture. <laughs> yeah, I was saying I, was, I appreciate the the photos that you put up there. Yes, thank you. Joe, Joe sourced all those, so if you don't like any of them, you can you can blame him. Or there. Yeah. Nice. Nice work, Finch. Did I also source this one? Hey. Oh yes, I did. Hey. <laughs> I mean, so she's not only an accreditation expert, but she's also fun and ready for the red carpet. That's all. That's terrific. <laughs> Always love seeing but, you at events. IRL, as we say. IRL. Ah. Joe just learned IRL. what that is. That means, yeah. 
I know what that means. <laughs> I learned a new one the other day, but I don't think I'm allowed to say it on the show. <laughs> we are live. That is my job to remind you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He's like kind of my, uh, my governance side, you know, so he keeps Great me flying know. straight and narrow. But uh, bef before we get too far, why don't you tell us about that recent award at the Hall of Fame event? Because that's pretty cool. Sure, definitely. Uh, it was a terrific honor. And I, I got the call prior to the award ceremony that I was going to be honored with the Chairman's Recognition Award. Um, it's a reflection of what our company does to help human service organizations achieve accreditation and provide safer, more effective services. I'll talk about that later. But um, it was great having colleagues, friends, family there to support. And I've been involved with the Business Council of Westchester, I think a member for about 13 years. I'm also a volunteer ambassador. Uh, and new members get paired with an ambassador to help them get the most out of their membership and kind of be a guide for the new members. Um, so it's a group that I've been very involved with for a while. And know a ton of people in the room and it was a really terrific honor so it was a lot of fun absolutely uh, well you know what the uh the hall of fame is is certainly a wonderful uh, event i think it looked pretty cool too i'll say that but uh you know no it was uh, nice to be in a in a room with with so many clients and colleagues alike just like you said that's certainly uh you know our perspective too and she nailed the speech which i'm not going to play today but i did record Either way. Oh, thank you. Wait, the, the key is keeping it short and sweet. <laughs> I agree completely. And you did. You nailed it. Right on point. Um, I think you should probably tell us all about Accreditation Guru. But I get the sense that clearly you are the guru. But I am sure a lot of people don't really know what accreditation is. So maybe we could start with what, what accreditation is. And then you could tell us about Accreditation Guru. Sure. And that is a good place to start. Um, accreditation is a type of certification process for organizations. If people are familiar with accreditation, it tends to be because of hospitals or universities become accredited. And there's a similar process for human service organizations, such as we work with, where an organization needs to adhere to hundreds of researched vetted standards that help them address the operations management of their organization and the programs and services that they are delivering. And they have to go through a third party review. It's a complex process. It's investment of time, money, and effort, but it really helps to get an organization to that next level. If they are licensed by the state, let's say, it takes them above and beyond being licensed. Uh, it's a great accomplishment, one that they market, might get additional funding from uh, the state or federal agencies and attract new clients, um, improve services and outcomes. So it's, it's a difficult process, but Accreditation Guru, we are a national consulting company and help organizations through this process. That's great. So I, I'm, I am curious because I am one of the people who knows very little about this. Um, who who is it exactly that creates these standards or is it different for each you know organization or each industry who how do, how do we come to agreement on what the standards are sure so there are independent accrediting bodies um, that operate at a national level they're they're not tied to the federal government um, but these accrediting bodies will research field test that their standards and they're then what the organizations need to adhere to. There's accreditation for almost any type of industry. As I mentioned, colleges, universities, also accreditation for museums and zoos. Uh, we focus on human service organizations. And that means that we are working with behavior health providers. So uh, addictive um, recovery and mental health providers. Uh, in child welfare, it might be foster care or adoption, group homes for kids. Uh, there's child and family services, supports for families and residential treatment providers. There's a wide variety, but um, each organization would tend to pick one accrediting body to work with and 
focus on that and get through their process. It can also take an organization, just so you know, about a year to get ready for their initial review. Wow. Up to a year. That certainly sounds like a long time and a lot of work that goes into it. Um, it do, do standards ever change? Is it always the, the same accreditation or, or do, are there any renewals that, that go into something like this? Yes. So an organization would need to go through a full review, renewal every three or four years, depending on which accrediting body they're working with. And the standards are updated to reflect um, new practices, uh, changing industry standards, and it's often on an annual basis that they will update standards. Sometimes they're small adjustments, and sometimes they might fully revamp an entire section or two. Uh, so it's very important that organizations keep up on changing standards and adhere to them so that they're, when they're ready for the reaccreditation in three or four years, they're ready to go. They're in line with everything that's new. Wow. It's pretty specific. It sounds like it between it is. you have to be up to date and you have to, you know, obviously adjust your, your training and, and how you're going to consult with them every, every year in order to keep current. How, how did you even get into this? Actually, I fell into accreditation at the beginning of my career. Um, I got my international MBA and was going to be looking for a company that operated internationally and landed at a continuing education organization that was putting on accredited training seminars across the U.S. and internationally, and actually became the COO of two organizations, a nonprofit and for-profit sister company. They held multiple accreditations. I eventually ended up working with other organizations, helping them get accredited, and ultimately was working at one of the major accrediting bodies, Council on Accreditation, before starting Accreditation Guru now 14 years ago. Wow. So, so I felt having, it and it fit. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you know, having come from what I guess I would say is client side at that point, uh, seeing firsthand, I guess, you know, what the accreditation processes would be, you know, from, from that side, it, it sounds like this is a, a clear challenge right, for, for these organizations to go through this process. And so you kind of just identified, a, a you know, an area where I, I suppose people could use some help then. Yeah, I mean, it, it's worked out. It's a niche business. Um, sure. But a lot of groups, when they're looking at accreditation, they have no idea where to start, um, do not understand what the standards say, what the accrediting bodies are asking for, and are too busy as is. I mean, everybody we know is working at 110% right now. So where are they going to get the extra time to focus on accreditation? So we come in, we help to guide them, help with heavy lifting. We don't do the accreditation for them, but we partner with them to really get the benefits of going through this process and then successfully getting through their accreditation review. Once that's done, that we can help them with the maintenance of accreditation and the reaccreditation. But that should all be a much easier process because we've done the work and the heavy lifting the first time through. Sure. So it sounds like there's some groundwork at least that you can, you can build on. Yes. And you specifically kind of went into the behavioral and the human services side. What, why did you start there? Um, it mainly was because when I was working at council on accreditation, those were the industries that they were focusing on. So I had, professional connections across the country. And in fact, um, when I started Accreditation Guru, my very first client was headquartered down in some Alabama. It was a group home for kids that had locations across Alabama and the Florida Panhandle. And they were going for accreditation for their first time. I got a call from the CEO and asked if I would come down, he had a job for me in Selma. And I said, thank you, Steve, but no, but I'm happy to consult. <laughs> and um, nothing against Alabama, um, but I, I am happy here in New York. And it was uh, just that that process. And it's also, to, to go back to your question, it's helpful to focus and be an expert in your field. I don't do hospital accreditation, let's say. We could, I could bring in the consultants and we could do that, 
but that's kind of its own animal. There are other consultants in that space. So we really focus on behavioral child welfare and also some, some education. I think that makes a lot of sense. And we always talk about being an expert in particular areas as well. And I mean, you are definitely the expert in those areas and that it makes everything much easier, I think. And if you're not, exactly. even though I think zoos would have been pretty cool. I don't know why you skipped it. <laughs> and animals, but... Aardvarks to zebras, right. Um, but yeah, you can't be a, a to Z, there you... a, to Z. <laughs> a to Z accreditation. Joe, I quit. <laughs> and right, so okay, we're... Ryan, we're going to uh, take you off screen <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> That's when you got the power. <laughs> no, no, you're not coming back. <laughs> All right. Well, I no, I, I, <laughs> yeah, we we like to have a little fun at it too. Yeah, that's um, a good. I thing. mean, it, now it sounds like you, you started kind of traveling nationally right away. Really, if you're talking about Selma, Alabama, and and I mean, I see your your Facebook page, and you're always someplace, and. Uh, I guess traveling is a big part of your work right now. It is. I mean, I always set the company up to be a national organization, no international. We've had clients across the U.S., Canada, Puerto Rico, far away as Saudi Arabia. And my team of consultants are located from Florida to Alaska. So a lot of our work can be done remotely. And if you're getting on a plane to go see a client in person, then you're getting on a plane. Um, you might even do that if you're in the same state. So um, we do operate everywhere. And my personal travel focuses a lot on going to state and national conferences, speaking and exhibiting, et cetera. Okay. Well, and you certainly, uh, you know, been a, a prolific professional speaker. And, and so how did that first work itself out where, you know, you, you first maybe got your, your first speaking role and, and, you know, now how often are you, uh, are you doing that? First speaking role, I seem to have kind of always been speaking at some point. I'd done some early, early trainings uh, on accreditation, on volunteer management, strategic planning. Um, and then part of my marketing mix was focusing on the state and national associations that cater to human service organizations and submitting speaking applications. So it's something that I've had in the mix always, I really enjoy, I'm um, good at. And so there's a lot of kind of traditional training sessions that are live, webinars, I will put together and moderate panels. Uh, I'm actually the only consultant in the country that will have a panel to moderate and the accrediting body representatives are actually the panelists, those on the dice. Mm. So um, yeah, it's it's something that I, I really enjoy. I, I like sharing information, you know, being a, a source of education and yeah, it's good. Keeps well, me busy though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. It, it certainly makes sense, you know, being in a subject matter, matter expert and, and in such a kind of a nuanced field, I'd say, um, you know, it, it makes sense that you'd have all the information and not all of it, but you'd have a lot of information and, and that represents a fair amount of of value to people. And so, uh, you know, the speaking certainly makes sense from, from that regard. Um, so uh, can you give us a sense? How, how often, how often is this happening? How often are you getting up on stage? Cause this is kind of where our worlds kind of bleed over. Right. So right. How, how often does that happen for you where you're, you know, in front of the lights? Sure. Well, um, I average about 20 conferences a year. I'm actually trying to keep it to 13 this year, a little more contained, not sure it'll, it'll stick, but, um, and I'm speaking at the vast majority of those. So 15 conferences a year and, you know, half a dozen or a dozen webinars a year. We're actually doing a lot more. We did a, a series of three webinars earlier this year and are going to be repeating that in the fall. And I also do a lot of um, co-hosted webinars with additional um, kind of service providers, be it uh, billing companies or electronic health record organizations or even attorneys that focus on nonprofits. So just if I can I bring in other experts, uh, I'm happy to do so and just share what they know as well. 
Well, it, it's interesting that the travel and certainly the professional speaking side represents so much of your time. What happened during that, that little thing that we just went through for a couple of years during, I, I forget what it was. Is Oh yeah. During COVID. Yeah. What Something. happened then? <laughs> how did you, you know, get your message across and how did you uh, stay in touch with all these groups? Sure. So when it, when it comes to the, the conferences and the trainings, um, certainly some were canceled. They went purely virtual. So did uh, remote trainings and, you know, picked up the number of webinars that we were doing. It was interesting because a couple of different times over the past three years, you know, uh, COVID numbers went down. They decided to hold conferences and, and even, you know, I've been to a conference and there was, uh, mandatory testing happening or conferences where you had to wear masks at all times. So they were taking precautions, but um, I, I was still traveling for the most part. I was actually just last week at a um, behavioral health conference in Palm Springs, California, and was speaking with a, an industry colleague that I know. And he said that was his first conference back out Wow. And I get it, but I was surprised because I've been on the road so much, you know, throughout these, these past three years. Um, but, you know, some people weren't quite comfortable with that. And as it goes for our clients, uh, we did have to shift to some virtual reviews. Uh, there are times when we will go on site for assessment, facility reviews, training, or um, be on location with them to conduct a mock survey to prepare them for their actual accreditation review. And we did have to switch to remote visits in that case, including having a client take an iPad and walk around the facility showing and having our consultants ask questions and give feedback on how the facilities were looking. Um, mm -hmm. But in all honesty, as soon as both the client was comfortable having someone on site and our the particular consultant working was comfortable traveling, it was fine by me. So um, our consultants are a group that likes to be on the road and they jump back at it fairly quickly with, you know, precautions. Yes. Sure. I was getting a little bit of noise there from Joe's microphone. <laughs> I'm happy to mute him anytime. Um, so you you certainly have uh, an interesting you know perspective on say technology. You talked about you know rolling your your iPad around uh, the room. Um, you know how long have you you know had that kind of relationship with technology? Was it was it terribly new? Um, you know did it did it influence how you manage your staff and your team? Talk, talk about that process. Sure. Yeah, it was really pretty interesting because. You know, in all honesty, there wasn't a ton that we had to shift. Um, from the very beginning, we have been a remote company. I, again, I mentioned consultants from Florida to Alaska and many states in between. My operations team is actually in the Milwaukee, North Chicago area. And I'm the only one that's here in New York. The closest person is in Philly. So um, we already had the meetings and communication and capabilities to do our work. And it was just those onsite visits with the clients or the conferences that had to switch for a bit. Um, but having a remote team is something that I have worked hard to foster a company culture. Um, I just don't want people to rely on technology and work in their own silos. So sure. um, I would have, over the years, I've had in-person company retreats. I've also had virtual retreats uh, because of the pandemic. And, sure. you know, ha virtual happy hours, uh, team meetings, and have looked for opportunities to have consultants work with one another on projects. And that helps to make and build relationships um, and the connections between them. They're also able to more readily share information and learn from one another. And it's been, it's been pretty great. It's, it's worked for us. So um, yeah, technology is, has been a help and 
you know, we certainly jumped on the Zoom bandwagon when everyone else did. So. <laughs> well, it was a it was a great tool. We we all you know kind of joked around that you know a few years prior to all this happening, there are things that we now do on a daily basis that we we would have said no way, it, it can't happen, it won't work. And now right. it's just a, you know a brand new standard. And in some regard, we we're somewhat similar. Um, you know, I think having the the grounding in in you know remote technology is is a, a huge advantage um which you you know you certainly hear you clearly saw uh, but i was actually a remote employee prior to the to the start of that so we can we can share some of that I, i'm patting myself on the back right now joe is that uh, i helped usher in a new era that we didn't even know was going to happen oh your mic is terrible look at yourself i'm gonna fix yep and he's gone that's it taking him out Joe, you you come on back when you when you have a working piece of technology. Look at that, you're proving your point. Nope, still right. terrible. Speaking wow. of technology, it's great when it works, right? It certainly does, and half our job is managing when it don't when it doesn't. And uh, I will say that since he can't comment, I now get carte blanche. I can make fun of him ruthlessly for the rest of the time. <laughs> nope. the still terrible, still terrible. Jennifer, you hear this too, right? It's not just me. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. All right. I just yeah. wanted to, to to clear that up for him. Well, we'll we'll move on without Joe. Maybe he can figure something out in the meantime. Nope. Still bad. Still terrible. Sorry, nope. Joe. Terrible. It doesn't work. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. He was having computer trouble a little while ago, and uh, clearly that has made an impact. But uh, in any case, I want to kind of shift gears for a moment. Um, I, I know you you do a fair amount of work with uh, nonprofits, so. You know, you're spending a lot of time, obviously, on the road. I'd imagine, um, you know, you, you've you've come to uh, have a few organizations that maybe you, you kind of keep near and dear to your heart. Uh, uh, are there are there you know any organizations in particular that stand out, and um, and and maybe why is that? And I appreciate the question. It's just a very difficult question because we work with amazing organizations with very vital missions, and. Um, our tagline actually is prepare for greatness and we are helping them, our clients to fulfill their missions. So um, uh, probably about two thirds of our clients are nonprofits. The rest are for profits and governmental okay. agencies. Um, and as far as favorites, um, it, that's hard. I mean, there, there have been some, some really good ones. Um, you know, some of the group homes for kids are just doing amazing work. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure if I have any favorites. Uh, I'm in, I'm involved with a lot of these uh, nonprofit associations around the country that support, like say, child and family service providers um, locally with nonprofit Westchester. Mentioned Business Council of Westchester and Westchester Children's Association. So um, I kind of try to spread out our support uh, where it's needed, but it's. All of our clients are pretty amazing. Oh, absolutely. It's like picking amongst your children. I don't have any, but I've heard. I've heard that that's somewhat difficult to do. <laughs> oh, and it's, <laughs> oh, and Joe's talking. We can't even hear him. There's no noise. I have, now there's I have a favorite child. Oh, wait, you're back. So you're I, back. I mean, okay. We did it. Do you have a favorite yeah. child? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell us who it is? We're not going to go there. But I mean, <laughs> it's clear. You can pick. You can pick who's your favorite. It's, it's not that complicated. I mean, I know I'm the favorite of my parents. So, I mean, yeah, what's, oh, well, what are you going to oh, do? How nice. Although I will say this, though, that there are um, – I, I have a cousin who, who jokes around. He said, I absolutely have a favorite kid. Today, it's – and then he will name his favorite kid today. So, it, it And there's some of that, you know – it changes by the day. Well, that well, that's I'm honestly, you know, uh, nonprofit work. We do a fair amount of it ourselves, and it, it is very easy to feel inspired and motivated uh, by missions that are, we'll say, a little bit, you know, more often human based. Uh, certainly, human services uh, would fall pretty uniquely into that category, um, you know. But but certainly something that tends to to inspire a little bit more motivation, I'd say, in, in some cases than others. Was that the intention to get involved with those types of groups from the very beginning, or did you just kind of did that just kind of happen? No, it, it it was because that um, as I mentioned, that was where my initial connections had been, and um, the accrediting body that I had worked for that was where they had focused. Um, so there are three major accrediting bodies 
in uh, the child welfare behavioral health space, but we work with others and some that focus on continuing education and training, um, college and universities, but it's, it, it was a deliberate focus of where I wanted to um, market our services and the organizations I wanted to work with. All right. That makes sense. I mean, cause I, I know that it was a, uh... Working with so many nonprofits was an active decision for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, like Ryan says, there's a there's certainly a feel-good part to it that is undeniable. And uh, we certainly have organizations that we like. We, we just understand their mission more than some others. Mm-hmm. But, you know, either way, I'm always curious yep. about everybody's business, you know. Um, so when you're not speaking and traveling, I mean, what do you like to do for fun? What, well, I mean, fun. is it all um, just those pictures like the red carpet or are there other things? Right, right. It's just, just every every weekend it's it's another trip down the red carpet. Um no, I I mean when I when I'm here and I'm home, uh like hanging out with my friends, going hiking, going to movies, uh trying new restaurants in town. I'm actually kind of excited. Uh this is the first year that I've been here locally when the Westchester Wine and Food Festival is going on. So I get to attend some of those events. Um, So, uh, you know, amateur wine connoisseur and looking forward to it. So yeah, just doing things locally, taking road trips and the like. Well, that's very exciting. You might see uh, some familiar face, familiar face. There we go. I don't know if I can say it that way, but at the Westchester Wine and Food, Joe is, uh, (laughs) is often there. Uh, but no, a fantastic event, uh, you know, certainly makes sense to try and, and also an, another, you know, good place working with nonprofits. There, there tend to be a lot of, uh, you know, people that, that we'll see there. Some people who are, um, you know, sponsors, um, less nonprofit side, but you know, it, it's getting out there. It's being present, right. That, that kind of speaks to, uh, the heart of what we were talking about earlier, right. Is, is trying to get in front of as many people as possible. Definitely. Definitely. Now, since I know you as a master networker, and you know you certainly are in contact with a lot of people, yes. do you find that you still have to do as much networking today, 14 years later, for your company that you, you probably had to in the very beginning? I mean, my networking happens in California and Texas and Chicago, and I, you know, that that's my networking. Um, and locally, I just enjoy meeting people, connecting, helping individuals connect to one another. Um, so am I still doing it? Yeah, I'm, I'm still doing it as much as it might be different from when I very first started out because I know so many more people, especially locally, oh, actually, and nationally. Um, so yeah, it's just, uh, Show off. It's just my personality, I, I guess. <laughs> You're just showing show off now, yeah. <laughs> and internationally, you know. I mean, <laughs> no, but I, I mean, you, you really are an expert. A while, so yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's it's really great, and I think you're exactly the right person to be an ambassador for the the business council and. And kind of guide people along. And and that's a, a tremendous resource. That I know that everybody has as a new member. And, uh, and I think that's why the group is so successful. But having Definitely. someone like you there is a real help. <laughs> Thank you very much. I mean, we have just discussed so much that, I mean, what else is there to, well, we're going to have to renew this conversation in like three more years. I mean, <laughs> I, I would be happy to definitely. No, it's, it's nice to that was the accreditation guy. process. Right, right. I, I like that. Nothing. And hey, accreditation I mean, is everybody's favorite topic, right? So <laughs> for I'm some, absolutely, clearly. Right. Yeah. Well, you are truly the guru. So we thank you for your time. I'm sure you're probably jetting off somewhere else now, maybe in the south of France. I don't know where you're going, but I mean, you have a lot of travel. Yes. But uh, yes. thank you, Jennifer, Definitely. for all of your time. <laughs> we we appreciate you, all of your time today. And uh, it's really been great. 
And I am sure we're going to see you now. If you tell me which wine and food event, I can tell you where the best tables will be. <laughs> but <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, I've got a couple of them lined up, so I'll, I'll shoot you a note. Sounds good. We're actually setting one up right now. So great. It, uh, it's, it's a great week, great festival all around. As long as we can get those skies cleared up of the uh, Canadian oh, wildfires, yeah. then we'll be right. in better shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, uh, but thank you once again, Jennifer, and we will let you go about your day and finish accrediting all of the uh, groups in the country here because they all need your help. All right. Well, thank you, guys. This has been a lot of fun. Likewise. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Finch, I ex expect a full report from you on the accreditation process. I'm typing it up as we speak. And um, since you're going to need help on that, let me tell you, you should reach out to accreditationguru.com. Oh, yes. Very nice. Yes, indeed. Yes. Jennifer Flowers is the guru of the accreditation process. So you should reach out to her, please. I can't believe there you guys go. don't know each other. I mean, she's so popular. She's everywhere. I mean, it, it's possible we've met. It is possible. I, I you know, it's a lot, it's you, a lot going on right you now. Just I'm a little might cloudy. Not be in the right circles. You might not be in the right circles. That That's all certainly saying. is true. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> all right, well, Gilbert. Anyway, we're, we're very lucky to have Jennifer on today. Yes, and, indeed. Uh, and again, she is a Hall of Fame winner, Chairman's Award winner, excellent, and an expert in her field. So we appreciate all that. Ryan, why don't you let people know how they can find us next week? when we may or may not be live, but let's go next week. I might be doing it live from Orlando, from the conference floor of Infocom. I'm still teetering. That on would the actually edge. be pretty if cool. Have, if I have good signal, I'm going for it, but. Okay. Well, so we're, we're winging it. We're it doing would it be live. Cool. Well, you're winging cool. it. That you're doing totally it live. Be... That would be pretty cool. I think it would be a nice thing if you can do it. So make it work. I mean, it could crash and burn. Let's keep that in mind. Also a possibility. Well, in the meantime, you can find us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on YouTube Live. You can do that every Wednesday at 1 p.m. While you're there, you can drop us a comment. Be part of the show. You can also like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the above. Much appreciated. And, of course, if you missed the show, go, hack, uh, go ahead and check out the rest of our videos on YouTube. And you can also find some bite-sized pieces for some highlights on Facebook and on Instagram and on LinkedIn. There you go. There you have it, Fantastic. folks. You've that's seen all, it all. That's all, folks. <laughs> that, that is all we have for today. But listen, yeah, right. once again, everyone, thank you very much. We will be joining you soon. See you on Wednesdays at 1. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. So long.